Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we have the new Oppo Find X which we are going to unbox. So, let's start. On opening the box, we have some documents, some ejector tool, and Type-C to 3.5mm adapter. Next we have this beautiful phone. Let's keep it aside for now. Next, we have the power brick. Earbuds. And Type-C USB cable. The Oppo Find X is a stunning phone, with bevealed edges, a beautiful gradient back design, and probably the highest screen to body ratio available, this thing is quite attractive. The most obvious design component here, is the omission of the rear and front facing cameras. While Vivo next showcased the dual rear cameras on the back of the device, the Oppo Find X takes this design to the next level. When you launch an app using the camera, the Oppo Find X will lift the shaded window, to reveal the cameras beneath. The right side of the phone houses the power button, while you will find the volume rocker on the left side. The bottom of this phone is a little different. It got the standard USB Type-C port, and bottom firing speakers, but Oppo also opted to place the SIM card tray on the other side of the charging port. The face of the phone is almost completely display, clocking a screen-to-body ratio of 93.8%. This is one of the highest screen-to-body ratios we have ever seen, only rivaled by the Vivo Nex. The display comes with a size of 6.42 inches, and a 19.5 to 9 aspect ratio. This display is curved as well, so if you have used a recent Samsung phone, you will know how that feels. The phone has 1080 by 2340 pixel AMOLED display which looks phenomenal. Colors are punchy and vibrant, and I have nearly no issues with it. With some of the latest hardware available on the market, the Oppo Find X performs admirably. The one issue I saw with performance was poor RAM management. My model has 8GB of RAM, but keeping just a few apps open used almost 4.5GB. The Fine X packs a Qualcomm Snapdragon 845, 8GB of RAM, 128 or 256GB of internal storage, and a 3730 mAh battery. This kept the device running smoothly the entire week, and I really didn't notice any hiccups during this time. Weirdly enough, Oppo omitted a fingerprint reader this time around, which really pushes the user to use the 3D face unlock feature. Sadly, you won't find a headphone jack on this device, but Oppo includes a dongle in the box. There is not any water resistance rating, nor expandable storage available on this device. Oppo instead opts for a dual SIM tray. The device packs 3750 milliamp battery, which provides around 15 hours of usage. The device comes with Android 8.1, with Color OS on top of it. Despite being hidden inside the phone, the cameras aren't actually that bad. The rear-facing 16-megapixel and 20-megapixel cameras perform quite decently. I found they tended to overexpose images more often, but the dynamic range was pretty damn solid. The 25MP front-facing camera performed just as well. Selfies seem to have nice skin tones, but could have been a bit sharper in my opinion. The mechanism opens up pretty immediately, when you launch the camera app, the live view didn't appear for 3 or 4 seconds. Oppo definitely needs to fix this, because it made catching fleeting moments hard.